Okay, another one of these teams that we were expecting and like didn't know what we were going to get in big in big games because of what has happened in previous years is Penn State. So Penn State storms back and beats USC in overtime. This feels like a massive monumental win for James Franklin. I understand that USC wasn't technically like ranked, but we know and we 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 can sense how good USC is. I think they are much better than their ranking. They're they're far better than their 3 and 3 record. And we know what Penn State has done in big moments in previous years, whether it's Michigan or Ohio State, they have come up short. This was a huge moment for James Franklin and Drew Aller. They needed this badly because if they go out there and lose, then it's just the same old Penn State. And they were able to come back and win this game. And big credit to Drew Aller because he didn't play his cleanest game. But man, he was great in big moments. You talk about coming down the stretch and getting those fourth down conversions, two of them, huge, nearly 400 passing yards. He bounced back from the three interceptions and was just unconscious late. And then here's the big part for, I think, Penn State fans, is that they got some guys that stepped up in huge moments, like Julian Fleming on one of those fourth downs. And they've got some wide wide receiver threats. If Fleming becomes a threat for them on the outside to go along with Tyler Warren, now you've got something. We know that they can run the football. We know that their defense is a quality defense. Like They're going to be fine everywhere else. The big question for me in particular, and I talked about this at length with James Franklin, both on the air and off, was about the wide receiver position. Would Trey Lampert step up? Would Julian Fleming step up? And now they've got not only some wide receivers making big plays in big moments, but they've also got this tight end, Tyler Warren, that went absolutely bananas. How about Tyler Warren, man? And Penn State has have, had a great tradition of tight ends, and this guy fits right in. Tyler Warren, 17 catches for 224 yards and a touchdown. By the way, that touchdown, he snapped the ball initially. They got the trick play, the Andy Kotal Nicky special. You got, you know, Aller gets the ball and then throws it to Warren and he makes the contested catch. This guy is a versatile player. He's a competitor. He's athletic. He catches it well. He runs pretty clean routes. And more importantly, they're creative uh, enough on offense to create structures to get him the right matchup. I really love what they do on offense, and that showed. That showed. So this this was a monumental game for Penn State. Based on the way that their season has gone over the last two years, when they get to their major hurdles, they would fall. And this was a major, major hurdle that they were able to get over. I understand USC's ranking is not, you know, oh, it's not a top 10 win for James Franklin. But boy, it feels like it because that USC team is way better than their ranking or record. We know that. We know that. If any of you watch football for any amount of time, you'll know that this is a really good USC team. That's the best 3-3 three and three team in the country. I know that that is not going to be solace for any Trojan fan, but let's talk about USC for just a moment. Nobody's going to want to hear this, including Matt Leinart. But Lincoln Riley is right. They are literally three or four snaps from being 6-0. and This is a young team. This is a team that everyone was going to say, kind of wait and see. Then the expectations went through the roof after that win against LSU. And now they've played three other games where it came down to a play here or there, and they came up short. It's got to be maddening for Lincoln Riley. Because this team is battling and doing really good things. Really good things. Defensively in particular, based on what they were a year ago and and, in previous seasons. What the the maddening part is, is, is that it's just now repetitive. It's like, well, now every time we get in this situation, it's not going our way. I, I was as frustrated as any, you know, Trojan fan watching them leave regulation with their timeouts. You know, I I root for I root for quality play and it didn't seem like the end of the game was was quality play from USC. I I didn't sense that. 
They had a seven point fourth quarter lead now in every one of their losses. They could easily be five and one, six and oh, and we'd be singing a very different tune. You've got a missed tackle here, an interception there, two fourth down conversions for Drew Aller, which is insane and great for Penn State and equally heartbreaking for USC, but that is the reality of it. Now, are their playoff hopes dashed? Probably. Probably. And that's unfortunate because that's a really good team. You ask these teams that are playing USC and they'll tell you like, man, that was really difficult. You know, they they had Penn State dead to rights and they came up short and no one wants to hear it from Lincoln Riley. And I get it. He, he makes $100 million over the lifetime of his contract and no one wants to hear it. And Trojan fans don't want to hear it and they think it's a bad contract. It's not a bad contract. That's That, that team is very close. Man. And they will come through this. I'm a big believer that you still like you win small or you lose small and then you win small and then you win big. They're on their way. Like they're they're doing things. That is a far better. And by the way, stop it. And we do this at Fox and it drives me insane. Would you stop it with the graphics about like in the first 27 games, he and Clay Hilton are exactly the same. It was the same crap that they used to do with Brady Hoke and Jim Harbaugh. And it was like, you'd have to be buried under a rock in order to not understand the difference between the two programs and the two teams in those two eras. And so can we stop it with the the Clay Helton and, and the Lincoln Riley era comparison? It's not close. It's not close. I'm so sick of that. I am so sick of that. It's such a, a narrative BS from those of us in, in, in our industry. I won't stand for it. If our social team does it, let me know. Flag me. I'm going to get all over there. Well, you know. Thank you for watching the Joel Class Show YouTube channel. And if you like this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.